welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Sister Girl on Films, and we are back with the final part three recap of Fatal Seduction. Y'all, I know this recap is mad late, but uh, many of you guys probably know I was sick, you know, for the last like week and a half, and I'm not at 100%. You know, I'm still feeling a little raspy, and my energy is really low, so your girl is still recouping, but I feel good enough to give my thoughts on episodes 10 to 14 so we can wrap up Final Seduction season one. So let's go ahead and get into episode 10, Confrontation. So before we get started with this episode recap, um, I had a question. <laughs> And let me know if I'm the only one that had this question. But when did our girl Nandi get braids? Like, <laughs> I had to go back and was like, when did, I mean, and we know it's, it's, a, it's a unit, okay? It's a unit. But it's braids nonetheless. And somewhere in between all of this mayhem, mess, and drama, Nandi had time to go get braids? Girl, you, you dealing with a whole lot. You ain't got time to be sitting down and, and getting the braids done, but... I mean, we know she didn't get them done. But in the context of the show, they want us to think she got them done. Anyway, that's just that's just something that just caught my eye and I wanted to ask if I was the only one that was like, girl, where you get these braids? Anyway. <laughs> so episode 10 picks up with this fool Leonard in the ambulance because as we remember from last time, he didn't had a heart attack because somebody didn't send him uh, Brenda's original statement. So his goose is cooked, honey, and he just can't handle it. So he didn't had a heart attack at work and now he on his way to the hospital. And so we get a flashback to years ago when all of this really popped off and come to find out the minister and his assistant, Precious, basically blackmailed Leonard. They basically told him, look, we want this case solved. You need to find who murdered my daughter. I don't want to hear nothing else about it being my driver. It is Benjamin Jeeva. That's who it is. I don't care nothing else. That's what the evidence needs to show, and that's who needs to go down for it. Leonard was basically, so it's either you do this or you're going to lose your family. And so... Leonard felt like he was pressure and he had no other alternative but to frame Benjamin Jeep. But my thing is, why did it have to escalate to you sleeping with Brenda? You know what I'm saying? Like, why did that have to be the end result? Because they didn't put a gun in your head tell you to sleep with her. They just said convince her. If you're not able to convince nobody with just your words, why the hell are you a judge? You know what I'm saying? A, pro a prosecutor. How you the head prosecutor and you can't even convince this heifer just to lie for you without putting your thing in her? Leonard, you're still trash. Y'all don't try to humanize him to me. He's still trash for all of this. And so the next scene, uh, we see Jacob and Z are finished having the sexuals in the classroom, in the lecture room. And Z is talking about, I can't believe we had sex in the lecture hall. <laughs> and Jacob is like, yeah, yeah. How your mama doing though? <laughs> your mama doing and Z is like my parents you know they're okay my mom you know a, a couple weeks ago she was the happiest I had ever seen in her life now things have changed she's not as happy as she was and uh, her just saying that little match under Jacob and he is like oh well shit that made my babe miss me sir pause no absolutely not that's not what none of that mean I mean some of it mean that but that don't mean that's your opportunity to try to win Nandi back. But that, that's at least how he took it. So he races up out the lecture hall and Z sitting there with wet drawers looking crazy. That's what happened when you act out of turn and you doing too much, Z. Girl, you acted all out of character for this boy and he just doing this to get back with your mama. And one thing that Z said that really threw me for a loop. So she says to Jacob... <laughs> Just because my parents are having issues, that doesn't mean that I can't have a boyfriend. Boyfriend? When did Jacob say he was your boyfriend? I, he even gave that look of like, boyfriend, girl, <laughs> pump your brakes. I don't know if I'm your boyfriend. See, that's how y'all know Z is so childish and so immature in her thoughts that she instantly is like, Jacob is my man. And no, no, little baby boo. So Voyo and Nandi are at the hospital. You know, they didn't got the call about Leonard. And so while they're in the waiting room, um, and some of these details might be murky, y'all, because I watched this and took notes almost two weeks ago. 
So I'm just going off my notes and they're not very detailed. Anyway, so they're in the waiting room and Boyo tells Nandi that Leonard had him shot and that he suspects that Leonard is the one that killed Brenda. And Nandi's like, no, I'm not believing that. It, Leonard wouldn't have done that. I'm like, girl, did you not just see the security footage of your bald head man in that damn green jacket coming out of her house? Like, what, what am I missing here? Like, I get it. You don't want to accept the truth. But then when Voyo, baby, <laughs> when Voyo tells Nandi that Brenda and Leonard were having an affair, he couldn't wait to get that out because he'd been pissed about that since he found out. And Nandi couldn't believe it. She started having flashbacks of all the times when Brenda was asking about their marriage and asking, well, who are we having an affair with? And how long has it been since y'all having sex? Yeah, all that questioning, it hit different now that you know that that's the heifer he was sleeping. Oh! <laughs> I know Nandi had to have been pissed. Can you imagine sitting in a jacuzzi and still, they haven't confirmed it, but I'm sure in the house that your husband and bought for his side piece in the jacuzzi with his hoe, she's talking about, well, when's the last time you guys had sex? It's been nine months. Mm. Y'all, them flashbacks hit different when you know the truth. Oh, I know. Oh, Nandi, bless her heart. So Leonard punk ass wakes up. And Nandi right there, honey. And so I'm thinking she just gonna be like, oh my God, baby, I'm so happy you're okay. What's going on? She was just like, so you was fucking Brenda, huh? <laughs> she didn't say exactly that, but she was just like, tell me it's not true. Tell me you were not cheating on me with Brenda. He was like, what, what? Uh, open your eyes. It ain't bright in here. Quit squinching your eyes. Open your eyes, Baldy. Answer the question. Was you sleeping with Brenda or nah? Okay? And he, he's still lying, y'all. How are you on your deathbed? Basically. Still lying about this damn affair. Nah, baby, nah. She was like, did you sleep with her the night she died or the day before she died? No, nah, baby, I promise. I just went over there to talk to her. He just, <laughs> it's just not <laughs> crying. It's not like that. Meanwhile, we see the flashback and he having sex with her. How how can one person lie so much? How? Just trifling. Just trifling. Later on, Voyo is in Leonard's uh, hospital room and he's talking to him. Leonard's in the bathroom. And in the background, it looks like Voyo is doing something to the, the little liquid bag that be hanging, the IV bag. But you can't quite tell, but it looks like he's doing something to it. Because then when Leonard turns around to talk to him, it's moving a little bit. And I'm like, child, Voyo up to something, honey. This whole part three, Voyo, child, we're going to get to it. So Jacob, after finding out that Nandi was just so happy when she was around the time, coincidentally, when they were screwing, he pops up at her house. Disrespectful. And... When he gets there, she's not there, of course, because she's at the hospital, but Z is there and she's all excited. He's like, come on in. He like, this damn girl, shit. <laughs> so he goes in and Nandi comes home. She pulls up and she sees Jacob in the pool swimming with Z. And she like, you need to get your ass out of my house. Have you lost your mind? Now, of course, Z doesn't know that this is a lover's quarrel. You know, she's thinking her mom is still mad about the whole, did he kidnap Z? Did he not kidnap Z situation? But Jacob and Nandi know what it's really all about. And so Nandi, you know, lets Z know that, you know, her dad had a heart attack and he's at the hospital. So they need to hurry up and go and see about him. And so Nandi goes back out to the car and she opens the gate and Jacob out there waiting on her. Oh, this boy. <laughs> So Nandi is cussing him out. You know, what are you doing here? Leave my daughter alone. Like I have already told you, like, I don't have nothing to do with you. They going back and forth. And so Jacob is like, I don't know why you want to admit that you love me. You are the happiest you had ever been with me. And now you're not happy. Just, just acted crazy. And so while they're arguing, here comes Z, honey. I didn't think that, that Z would find out this fast. Here she comes. She's like, what the fuck? And she can't believe it. So now it is out. She didn't heard 
that Jacob and her mama been having the sexuals, they was having an affair and all the things. And so Jacob didn't even apologize to Zeke. He just rolled his eyes and walked in his little Mustang, honey. And so Nandi and Z are in the car. Nandi is like, let me just explain. Like he's obsessed with me. And um, there was nothing ever going on with him. And Z is like, you slept with him. And Nandi is like, no, I never slept with him. I'm like, lady, why are you still lying at this point? You might as well just come clean now because she didn't hurt, overheard the argument. You might as well just tell the truth at this point. Just throw everything on the table. But she don't. She's still lying. And Z does not believe her, rightfully so. This is the first time Z act like she got some damn sense. So back at the hospital, Leonard is still sitting up there looking a, a fool. And Precious walks in in like a lab, like a doctor's coat, lab coat or whatever. Now this scene to me was so unnecessary because I thought that she would go in there and like try to kill him or, you know, physically harm him. All she did was walk in and say, the minister didn't like that you called him about, you know, the Jeeva case, you know, don't call him no more nigga. I'm like, girl, you done got all <laughs> dressed up and did all this covert shit just to say that. Girl, that could have been a text message. I just felt like that scene was unnecessary. So after Precious leaves Leonard's room, he's all distraught, you know, because the minister's not happy, she's not happy. So this food then sat up here and had a damn seizure. Voyo and Nandi are back in the waiting room and they're talking and Voyo is trying his damnedest to convince Nandi that Leonard killed Brenda. And now at this point, I'm like, bro, you trying to push this narrative like way too hard. We see that Detective Charlie uh, was supposed to meet Voyo at this place to give him the rest of the documents for the Jiva case. But unfortunately, somebody else beats Voyo there and Detective Charlie is killed. And the episode ends with a shot of Detective Charlie dead on the beach. So of course, you know, with everything that's happening, we can only suspect that the person that would have had Charlie killed was the minister. Cause at this point, the minister is sinister. <laughs> So that's what happened on episode 10. Um, just a lot of things, you know, being revealed to us and, you know, confrontation. And a lot of it was a lot of confrontations, honey. Jacob confront Na Nandi, Z confront Nandi, Nandi confront Leonard. Just, it was a lot that was happening. But things really heat up in episode 11. Go ahead and get into it. So episode 11, Sins of the Past, opens up with Jacob pleasuring himself at the thought of Nandi. And in the midst of him doing that, he looks himself in the mirror and he starts to think about all the crazy shit he been doing, about how he basically tell her in the woods, you know, if you think I'm a psycho, I'm gonna show you what a psycho is. Ain't nobody more important than me. In that moment of post-nut clarity, he realized he been losing his damn mind. So he punches the mirror and I think that was just like his call of like, bruh, you have been doing the most and you have been tripping. Z and Nandi are talking and Z is just pissed off about Jacob because at this point, she now she believes what her mom is saying in regards to them not having sex, that he just being a stalker. And so Z feels like um, Nandi should call the police on him and they should press charges on him because toxic men like him can't get away with the stuff that he did. And I'm like, girl, let's, let's not do that. Let's not forget the fact that he didn't have to do a whole lot of cohorsing you to sleep with him. If I recall, he was telling you no. And he was like, we shouldn't do this. And he asked for consent every single step of the way. You were the one pursuing him. So the fact that now you want to press charges on this young man because he played you, if, if that was a crime, nigga, do you know how many men would be in jail for just playing a woman? Babes, that's not a crime. I agree. Should it be? Sure, why not? But it's not. So, girl, let that go. Plus, your mama lying. Because she whipped that thing on him. She laid it low and spread it wide. So, she ain't telling you the full truth. So, you might want to simmer down, honey. And so, while Nandi is at the hospital visiting Leonard, she looks at the, the scrubs of the doctor that's attending to Leonard. And she remembers oh, that dumbass green jacket. So, she goes home. Um, and gets the green jacket and she calls Voyo. So Voyo meets Nandi at her house and Nandi is like, look, this is the jacket that um, Leonard was wearing in the, in the surveillance camera. Like, what should we do? And now Voyo is like, 
well, that doesn't mean anything. Like, maybe something else happened. You know, maybe somebody else was involved in Brenda's murder. So now, he trying to gaslight Nandi. Now, you, at first, you was trying, you had all this evidence. You was just convinced that your brother killed the woman you love. But now, you trying to make Nandi second guess herself and think, well, why would you think that? And, and I said, oh, Boyo is, is trying to play some mind games with these people. And I don't know what's going on, but this ain't the same Boyo that been limping around and, and trying to be private eye, inch eye, private eye. Something is going on. And I don't trust it. But he tells Nandi to hide the jacket and they'll deal with it later. Z texts Jacob and Jacob lets her know that her dad, Leonard, was instrumental in her and his father being wrongfully accused for the sexual assault and murder of a little girl. And so Z is like, what are you talking about? You have got to be lying to me. So Z is just, you know, overwhelmed because she just feels like it's just way too much that's happening. So she goes and talks to Nandi and it's like, Jacob told me that dad framed his dad. Is that true? And so Nandi finally comes clean about that, you know, about, yes, that is true. That's what happened. Nandi, you know, it's just, it's just kind of overwhelmed with all the things that are happening. She's walking back to her car and she sees no other than Jacob again out by her car. And she's just like, oh my God, like, will you not give it up? Like, I don't want to talk to you. Like, leave me alone. Like, you have done more than enough. Like, I am, I am sick of this. And so she needs him in the balls and she goes to walk away. And he's like, well, don't you want to hear what you know, me and Brenda talked about the night I went back to her house. So, of course, Nandi wants to hear what's going on because, you know, she's thinking that he might have had something to do with Brenda's death. But then come to find out, um, Jacob never admitted to being Benjamin Jeeva's son, um, but Brenda did conf confess to him that she lied about everything. She admitted to Jacob that she didn't see anything and that she was forced to give that confession. Nandi, of course, you know, feels bad for him and he starts talking about how he loves her and how he's so sorry and he just wants to be with her. And, you know, they're looking like they're about to kiss and Z walks up on him. And I'm like, this poor baby. Like, writers of the show, just give her a break. I mean, she get on my nerves, okay? But baby girl don't deserve this level of trauma, okay? So she runs away. You know, they don't see her there, of course. And they don't kiss, you know, but... Nandi lets him know, you know, it's just too much. You have crossed too many lines and I just cannot be with you. And rightfully so. Like, Jacob. You have been having sex with her daughter. Even if it works. It, let's, let's say it works. Let's say that Nandi falls head over heels in love with you and decides she want to be with you and only you. Uh, so Z gonna be your stepdaughter now after you didn't have sex with her? Like, sir, think this through. Like, your brain is not braining the way it should be braining. You know what I'm saying? And so Detective Roxanne is in the parking garage getting ready to go to her car, and then she gets attacked. And then this bitch turns into the Black Widow, and the assailant, you know, did a whole lot of nothing because she kicked their ass, and she knows that there was a security camera in the parking garage. So she goes to check the footage, and it's some local criminal you know that attacks her I was amazed at how they was actually able to see that because the only thing that wasn't covered was his eyes right there I feel like that ain't enough to be able to identify somebody but we'll go with it <laughs> D goes to Jacob's shop and so she confronts Jacob and she like you know what's going on you know you are crazy you know you got involved with me because you were stalking my mom and Jacob is like you know I was just I was just going through a lot emotionally once you know Nandi decided to end things and she was like, you have been sleeping with me and my mama at the same time? He was like, no, it's not like that. No, it's not like that, Z. He wasn't fucking your mama because if he had been, he wouldn't have been fucking you. <laughs> you were the runner up, baby girl. I hate to tell you, you were the runner up. So no, it wasn't like that. But you got a right to feel upset because that was sick. And Jacob was wrong for that. And of course, Z is just like, Stay away from me. Stay away from my mom. I cannot believe you. You are disgusting. I don't know why you would do me like this. And so she leaves the shop. And so Jacob is just, his world is just in shambles at this point. Nandi tells Z that Leonard may have had something to do with Brenda's death. First of all, quick on this bitch, her aunt Brenda.
At this point, once you find out that this hoe been sleeping with your husband, that aunt shit is out the window. That just, no. The fact that she kept calling her aunt Brenda, I'm like, it better have been a South African culture thing. And not because she still viewed that bitch as her best friend. And of course, Z is just like, what are you even talking about? Like, her world is a poor baby. Her world has just been flipped upside down. Her mama been sleeping with a student slash her boyfriend. Her daddy in the, in the hospital for having a heart attack. He may have something to do with the death of her aunt Brenda. Like... It's just a lot. And Z is just, it's just overwhelmed. It's just too much for her. And she just can't handle no more of it. So she just kind of walks away from 90. She's like, I, I can't deal with no more of this. And that's understandable. So the next scene, we get a damn police chase, action packed. I was here for it. I didn't expect us to have like a police chase and like a, a good like little fight and tussle in this show. But we got it. So the police show up at the bar and little criminal thug that attacked Detective Rose, Roxanne was there. And so he take out running. So they chase him through the building. He parkouring. He jumping over roof to the roof to the roof. He gets to the alley. He running through the alley. And then he pushes open the gate. And Chad Boyo useless ass is there. He get knocked out. <laughs> I said, I know he ain't about to give him a chase. Nobody was just limping ass, okay? But the suspect gets apprehended and they take him back to the precinct. And so when they ask him, you know, who do you work for? You know, what do you have to do with this situation? Were you hired by the minister? And the guy was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm not trying. I wasn't trying to kill you. I don't work for no minister. Um, if I tell you, you know, who hired me, you know, I want immunity. I want to be good. And Detective Roxanne was like, yeah, whatever. Just who, who hires you? And allegedly Leonard hired him. Now, when he said Judge, I, I can't say his last name, but Judge Leonard is what we're going to call him. And he said Judge Leonard. I immediately said, oh, Voyo done set Leonard up. Voyo is cutting up. Because I know, when, when would Leonard have time to have, like, none of it even made sense. So the pieces started coming together for me that Voyo is up to no damn good. Y'all, uh, it's, it's getting spicy, you know. Things are really heating up. You know, stuff is coming out. Things are being revealed. Now, I feel like we didn't need 14 episodes because the next couple episodes, a lot of the stuff just could have been wrapped up real quick. But episode 11 was good. But baby, episode 12, child, let's get into it. So episode 12, My Brother's Keeper. Now this episode, this might have been my favorite episode, you know, of part three. So we pick right back up in Leonard's hospital room. You know, Leonard, Leonard, <laughs> Leonard is under arrest. And so of course they're not gonna take him into custody until he gets, you know, the okay from the doctors that he is good to go. So Z is just overwhelmed by all the things because she just can't believe that her father, who she loves, is now the prime suspect in her aunt Brenda's murder. Not to mention her mom was sleeping with her boyfriend and just all the things. So Z runs up to the roof and I'm like, is Z gonna jump off the roof? So Leonard tells Voyo about Minister blackmailing him and about how he had no choice but to do everything that he was doing because he was doing it for the family. Voyo was just like, okay, yeah, whatever, shut up. But what I need you to do is call your lawyer. <laughs> Tell your lawyer I'm about to come to their office. I need you to go ahead and sign over all your assets so we can have all your ducks in a, in a row. You know, so if this stuff go left, they can't get your money. And so Nandi comes into Leonard's room and she's just like, look, enough. So much and already came out. You need to tell me the truth. Did you kill Brenda? And Leonard is like, I don't know. And I'm still, at first I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? But then I'm like, has he been having medical issues this whole time? Like, what's been going on? So Nandi is also confused because she's like, something ain't right. And so the doctor pulls Nandi aside and is like, we ran a test after Leonard's seizure and he has um, a high amount of sodium in his system, which would caused him to have memory issues and cognitive issues and this is why his condition is starting to worsen and so we get a shot of Voyo honey with a baggie full of syringes throwing them away I said he been making his brother sick 
I, I knew, I knew, I knew he was putting something in that damn IV bag. I knew, Voyo? Chill. Jacob is at his place and Voyo shows up and tries to sneak attack Jacob. Jacob, Jacob told him before, you try me again, I'm going to be ready for you. And he was ready for Voyo. So they got to tussling and, and going back and forth. And, and they get to fighting over the gun and, and the gun discharges. Nobody gets shot, but Voyo almost gets shot. And so he talks to Jacob and he's like, you know, I'm here. I wasn't trying to harm you. And I'm like, why you pull a gun on him? And why you try to sneak up on him? Like, if you didn't want to harm him, you just knocked on the door. Hey, what's up? I need to talk to you. I don't trust this boy, yo. Voyo was like, look, I feel like what was done to your family was wrong and I want to make amends with you. So if you leave town, you know, I will make sure that your mom gets the best care that money can buy. And then, you know, once you are gone, let me know. I will wire you some money and then I will send you one final wire after that. So basically trying to get Jacob out of town, trying to pay him off, which on the surface, it kind of feels like Voyo is trying to do the right thing because Jacob has gone through a lot, but also it's kind of hard to see the good in Voyo at this point because he is doing a lot of shady shit. So Jacob goes to see his mother and her condition has just gotten worse to the point where she don't even recognize him. Um, he's like, you know, mom, it's me, Jacob. She was like, you're not my Jacob. He's dead. Um, and it's, it was a really sad scene, honestly. And so, you know, Jacob, you know, just looks, first of all, <laughs> I don't know who this actor is who plays Jacob. That man is fine. I'm gonna have to figure out who he is. I know he in South Africa. Maybe I need to go to South Africa. Y'all, that just distracted me. But I just had a vision in my mind of that scene. And he looked so good in that scene. Anyway, so Jacob, you know, lets the, the nurse know, you know, tell my mother I said bye. You will get um, instructions, you know, in a, in a couple of days. Um, you know, we're going to move her out of here. She's going to get good care. And the nurse is just like, you can't leave your mother. And he's just like, this, this ain't my mother no more. Like, she don't even know who I am no more. And it's just for the best. I agree with Jacob in this situation because at this point, no, you shouldn't leave your loved ones like that. But if she's already resolved in her mind that her son is dead and she don't even recognize him when he comes to visit, she already in the grieving process of grieving her son. So even if he does continue to visit her, she has no idea who he is it doesn't impact her like she doesn't care. And as long as he's making sure she's getting the best care that she can, and I'm sure, you know, he might be able to pop up on her every now and again without, you know, Voyo knowing about it. But I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't blame him for that. I know it was a hard decision to make, and it's one I wouldn't want to have to make, but I can see why he made the decision that he did because that's not even the woman that he knows and she doesn't even know him. So at this point, it's like nothing will really change for the worse or the better if he made this decision. Y'all let me know in the comments below how y'all feel about that. I feel like it was a great scene and it was really emotional. This is a good ass show. So Voyo goes back to the hospital with Leonard. And so Leonard is, is doing even worse and worse. And so Voyo convinces <laughs> Leonard to sign over his power of attorney to Voyo. And then Voyo starts saying, you know, we're going to get you out of here. I have a friend in Mozambique. Like, don't worry about it. I love you, brother. I'm going to take care of you. And Leonard is like, Mozambique. He was like, bro, don't worry. We talked about this before. Like, <laughs> Leonard don't even know if he's coming, if he's going. He don't even know. And Voyo is just like, yeah, we talked about you going to Mozambique. So just sign over this power of attorney and I will take care of everything else. And so Leonard's like, well, that's not going to work because, you know, now I'm under arrest. You just can't, I can't turn a sign over power of attorney. He's like, well, this is dated before the death of Brenda. Uh, so my thing is, how, well, I guess because he went over to the lawyer and had a child. Voyo is just... <laughs> And my thing is, how come Leonard's attorney hasn't been questioning none of this? Like, on some real shit. Like, for a second, y'all, let's really think about this. All of this shit is popping off, and Leonard's attorney hasn't shown up not once to kind of be like, um, what's, uh, are you okay? Like, what is happening right now? Like, are, like, 
I don't talk to the police no more. Like going forward, I would like, what's going on? Uh, terrible, terrible lawyer that we never saw. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Boyo goes out to the parking garage of the hospital and he lights a car on fire. And so it sets off the fire system in the hospital. He runs in, it's a fire, it's a fire. <sighs> Here's, here's, here's where this show has, I just, where I have some issues with it every now and then. So I would imagine that a hospital will have a protocol in place. If there is a fire, any type of emergency situation where I would assume the hospital will probably get locked down and then they will have a procedures in place to safely get the patients out of the, ho the hospital rooms and out of the hospital, right? That's what I'm thinking will happen in my logical brain. I don't care what country we're in. I feel like that would be the protocol for any well-managed hospital. And this is a hospital that is housing one of the most notable judges <laughs> in, in the city, okay? So I'm thinking they would have that in place, but nope, not for the sake of this show. Voyo goes in there, everybody's running around chaotic, chaos is everywhere. The doctors is like every man for themselves, like <laughs> just mayhem and madness. And so Voyo goes to Leonard's uh, hospital room. So while Voyo is helping Leonard, you know, get dressed and everything, he gives them these pills and say, here, take these pills, they're for your heart. I'm thinking, ain't no telling what kind of pills he is giving Leonard at this point. I highly doubt they got anything to do with his damn heart. I child he is fully trying to kill his brother but anyway so they make it out of the hospital room and so they're um seen by one of the police officers that's supposed to have been looking over leonard's room and so leonard and the police officers start fighting and tussling and then like they're fighting with the gun and so the gun a gun goes off and before we see what happens we get a shot of 90 at home and there there's a rose and a letter on her bed and it's from jacob then jacob is letting her know that he's sorry for everything and he really loves her and no matter what he will always be there for her hopefully that's like leaving us open you know for a possible but again i feel don't, there's there's not a future for Nandi and Jacob. There's there's not a future that makes sense. Maybe I'm tripping. There's not a future that makes sense because in what scenario will the man that was fucking me and started fucking my daughter to get back at me now be back with me so I can start having sex with him again and now we married him together. There's no scenario where that would ever make sense. So I appreciate the sentiment and it was really sweet and I'm sad to see Jacob's fine ass go. But as we'll find out next couple episodes, it ain't really gonna matter. No way. <laughs> so the episode ends when we find out the person that was shot was the police officer and the person who shot the police officer was Voyo. This was a good episode. I like this episode. I feel like we really got to see how dastardly Voyo is starting to act. And to see the demise of Leonard it, it, I'm kind of torn because a part of me is like, you deserve all of this. But there's another part of me that's like, but also he's being manipulated in a lot of ways. And now it's making me question how much of what we know about him is true and how much isn't. But I feel like at the end of the day, he's still a shitty person. <laughs> but things really, and this, I, honestly, again, I feel like everything that happened between episode 13 and 14 just could have been episode 13. And that could have been it for us, but we still got two more episodes to go. So let's go ahead and get into episode 13. Episode 13, One More Lie. Baby, this is the biggest lie of them all. But it is a lie that I saw coming. Let's go ahead and let's talk about it. So the episode opens with Leonard taking the gun out of Voyo's hand. And Voyo's like, what are you doing? You knew what he was doing. And Leonard is like, they already think I killed Brenda. What's the one more body? So he takes the gun, wipes off Voyo's fingerprints, puts his fingerprints on it. I don't know if that's how that go but that's what they telling me works. <laughs> so we'll go with it. And so of course, now that, you know, Leonard has escaped from the hospital, it's all over the news. And so detective Roxanne, you know, goes to Voyo's bar and Voyo is there. And she's like, where's your brother? And so by this time, 
Voyle has taken uh, Leonard, you know, out to the middle of nowhere. And so Voyle's like, I don't know where he's at. You know, I, I, I don't know. He ain't here, though. But y'all y'all are free to look around. And so Voyle starts talking to the police about how, you know, he, he could be dangerous. And um, they're talking about how he killed a police officer. And he, you know, starts, you know, just going on about how, you know, I think he was talking about going to Mozambique and just setting Leonard all the way up. But then he says, or maybe somebody else is involved. You didn't already planted the seeds. You know what you're doing. So not only is Voyle enacting this this crazy ass plan, but now he's making sure the police have no doubt in their mind that Leonard is a killer and he is dangerous and a dangerous society and needs to be apprehended ASAP. So we get a shot of Leonard out um, in the middle of nowhere on this bus and he's having flashbacks and he's just going through it. And so this is the moment I've been waiting for. I don't know about y'all, but I've been waiting on this moment. It's a flashback of him and Nandi talking and Nandi is talking about how they need to tell Voyo the truth. And Leonard is like, for what? He's not going to take my daughter. And like I have been thinking this whole time, Z is Voyo's daughter. I knew it. I knew it. All the signs were pointing to it. And I was right this whole time. And so Leonard is just dealing with all the, the guilt of that. And it just feels like I have to come clean to Voyo about this. Voyo goes out to check on Leonard, you know, on this little abandoned bus out in the middle of the desert. And uh, Leonard is like, you know, brother, I am so sorry. I am such an awful person, but I did everything for the family. You know, everything is a lie. Z is even a lie. And he's like, Voyo, I'm so sorry. We should have told you. And, and boy, it's like, what are you talking about? And Leonard is like, you know, I stole your daughter. And he said, <laughs> it's Leonard acts like he's about to start crying. And Voyo was like, he starts choking him. He was like, I will beat you if you start crying. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Because at every, at ever since he tried to run up on Voyo at that bar, Leonard just been crying and wanted everybody to feel bad for him. And he had no choice. And he had, to, he had so many choices along the way. And although I don't agree with Voyo on a lot of what he's doing right now, but him choking him out and saying, if you even drop a tear, I will beat you. <laughs> was so funny to me and to me so appropriate and so Voyo is pissed as he should be he goes outside the van and he is just like he don't even know how to feel he is distraught so y'all it is just chaos Voyo goes to um Nandi and Leonard's house and Z meets him there and you know she's just talking to him now he knows that's his daughter and so, you know, she's like, Uncle V, you know, it's, it's just too much happening. Like, is everything true about my father? Did he really kill that police officer? Did he really kill Aunt Brenda? And Voyo's like, yeah, he did. <laughs> and Z is like, I just, I, I don't even know what to think anymore. And I'm just like, Voyo is going to do everything he can at this point to ruin Leonard's reputation with Z, a hundred percent. Voyo lets Z know that he's there for her. You know, he he will never leave her. He always gonna have her back, you know, and, and he always loves her. Which that was always how he was with Z anyway, but now it just really hit different. And his motive is a lot different now than it was before. When Voyo goes into the house, you know, Nandi is frantic and, you know, she asks him, you know, do you know where Leonard is? And Voyo's like, no, I don't. She was like, are you sure? Like, are you lying to me? And Voyo said, I swear on the life of his child, I don't know where he's at. Well, damn. <laughs> wow. I couldn't believe that he said that. I couldn't believe he said that because y'all know, because Leonard ain't got no kids. <laughs> Voyo offers to stay the night with Nandi, um, you know, be, just because there's just a lot happening and, you know, and Leonard's on the loose. Nandi welcomes it and she's like, yeah, that's fine. You know, she has no issue with it. But at this point, we know Voyo was up to no good. So ain't no telling what he got planned while he at that damn house. Voyo somehow convinces Leonard to come back to Nandi to his house, really, um, so he can say his final goodbyes to 
to Z and Nandi as he goes to Mozambique. And so shit just seems like real questionable. Like at the security camera, Leonard, you know, has his hood up. He has his back to the camera. So you really can't see his face, which I know is intentional, but cause they're trying to set it up to look like it's a burglary. Voyo tells Leonard, you know, to hit me upside the head, knock me out, you know, make it look real. And so he knocks him upside the head and then, um, you know, after all the commotion, Nandi goes down to see what's happening. It's Leonard, you know, and Leonard is, you know, talking to Nandi and just apologizing to her. And it's just like, I don't know what's happening. Um, you know, I, I don't know what's happening in my mind. Like nothing seems real to me. I don't know what's going on. I don't have no answers. Like I'm just so afraid. And Nandi is just like, I want to divorce Leonard. <laughs> Now, mind you, he had a gun out. And I'm like, girl, maybe this wasn't the right time. You know, okay, but I feel you. And so Leonard is like, no, don't leave me. I'm sorry. I love you. I want my family. Um, I just don't know what's happening right now. And so while he's like up on her talking, you know, he has the gun out and it looks like they're fighting, but they're really not. And so Z gets awakened and she looks over the balcony and she sees that somebody is attacking her mom. So she grabs one of her katana swords and she runs down to the pool. She's like, get off my mom. And then she stabs Leonard y'all. So we right back to the opening scene of the season where it looked like Nandi had killed somebody when all this whole time it was Z who stabbed Leonard. Leonard is in the pool. They call the police. And before the police get there, you know, Nandi tells Z, like, I did this. Like, you don't say anything to them. I'm taking the fall for it. And so Voyo kind of lurking in the shadows. You know, he's kind of shocked because he didn't expect this to happen. So Nandi takes the fall for it. And that's why in the beginning, we saw Nandi being led away in handcuffs because she is taking the fall for the attempted murder of her husband. Shit. And so the episode ends where the season began with, the, with Nandi being put into the back of the police car. And it's just a lot. Low key, if I'm being honest, we the, the season could have stopped right there. That would have been a fire ass way to end this season. And then season two could have picked up where episode 14 picked up. But we got one more episode to talk about. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into episode 14. Episode 14 outplayed. Now, <laughs> this, I'm not going to lie. Even though I feel like episode 13 should have been the season finale, uh, episode 14 was a really good episode. So the episode opens with uh, Voyo um, talking to Z and just kind of letting her know everything that's going on with her mom. Um, you know, kind of just telling her to keep everything cool. You know, we'll handle it. You know, don't worry about anything as per use. I got your back. And so Voyo and Nandi are talking and he asks, does he know everything? Cause he, if he doesn't know everything, he can't help her. And she was like, yes, you, you know, everything. He was like, are you sure there are no more secrets? Like I know everything that I need to know. She was like, yes. Like, you know, everything that you need to know. There are no more secrets. Um, because at this point, she don't know that he know that Z is his daughter. So he's trying to get her to admit that. She's still not admitting it. And so he gets up and walks away. And she gets, you know, carted off to jail. Well, to her holding cell. And so they're in court. And she's with her lawyer. And the judge is like, well, we have... Um, confirmation numbers for a flight out of the country um and we have a fake passport and Nandi is like excuse me I did, ain't none of that stuff mine somebody is setting me up at this point girl you should know who that somebody is because who was in your house Nandi who who was in your house basically the narrative at this point is that Nandi and Jacob were in cahoots to kill Leonard so they could run away and be together. <laughs> Baby, I just, I can't. And so, of course, Nandi's bail is denied and she just can't believe it. She's just like, this is all a lie. And Z is in the courtroom. She's just crying because... This poor baby, her dad, she didn't almost kill her daddy. Her mama about to go to jail. Her mama didn't took the fall for it. It's just a whole lot of, a lot that is going on. So in the hallway of the courthouse, 
Z approaches Detective Roxanne and it's like, I want to talk to you. Um, I really want to tell you the truth about what happened the night that my father, you know, was stabbed. While Z is in the detective office and telling her everything, obviously she's telling her the truth of what happened. Detective is just looking at her and she's just like, look, I know you love your mother and you would do anything to protect her, but it's okay. We know that your mom tried to kill your dad. And, <laughs> and Z is just like, no, like I'm telling you the truth. And so Voyo says, you know, to Z, you know, go ahead, you know, step in the hallway. I'll talk to the detective. Don't worry, I'll handle it. And so as Z leaves the room, Voyo and the detective are talking. And the detective Roxanne, Roxanne said, yeah, you did say this would happen and that she would try to take the fall for it. Child, Boyo is a top tier villain at this point. At this point, he won't even let Z even take the fall for it at no point, no time, honey. Detective Roxanne is like talking to Nandi uh, with Nandi's attorney present, as you should. And the detective is just like, you know, we know why you did this. You, you tried to kill your husband so you could run away with your lover. Um, and Nandi is like, that's not true. And the attorney was like, you know, you don't have any proof of that. And the detective was like, well, when we asked you what happened, um, the night that your friend died, you said that nobody else came over, but your little boyfriend was at the house. And the attorney was like, that's not true. And Nandi finally said, yes, it is true. I was lying. And her attorney was like, bitch, <laughs> you're supposed to tell me everything. And so at this point, Nandi is just making herself look guilty. We get a shot of Nandi arriving at the, the actual jail. Baby, I said, is this what prison look like in South Africa? Girl, I'm thinking you're going to have like some Orange is the New Black type of facilities. This look like Rikers Island. God bless you, Nandi. Okay, girl. So then we get a scene of Detective Roxanne and other detectives at Leonard and Nandi's house. And they come across all these receipts all this evidence that was obviously planted there by Voyo to make it look like that not only did Nandi have these plane tickets, this fake passport, but then a bunch of damn receipts for sodium, the same chemical that was used to make Leonard sick. So Voyo visits Nandi and baby, <laughs> I wanted to jump through that screen and choke him. He admitted to everything. He was like, I'm sick of you rich people feeling like you can just get away with everything. You took my daughter away from me. You didn't even tell me I had a daughter. You took the one woman I loved away from me and you will pay for everything that you have done to me. Y'all, I don't know how I forgot to mention this um, while I was recording this video, but this is the most important part of that entire conversation. Brenda killed herself this whole damn time. And Boyo knew. Y'all, I, I don't know how for the life of me I forgot to mention that when I was recording this video. But I'm glad I reviewed my notes now so I didn't forget to mention it. But I was pissed when that part came on while I was watching the show. And I was like, he been masterminding this the whole damn time. And Brenda... Brenda? Well, I mean, yeah, I guess. But Leonard did that to Brenda. He reveals that he knows that Z is his daughter. Voyo is just like, you're going to rot in jail. And you can tell whoever you need to, but nobody's ever going to believe you. And, and that's it. And she's just crying and she just cannot believe it. And so we hear on the news, you know, that Leonard... Um, is now in a coma, you know, so he's not dead, but he's in a coma. And we also see Jacob fine ass. He is somewhere over in wherever he done ran off to. Um, but he is the chief suspect also in this case, because now the narrative is that it was the crime of passion. And so Nandi and her lover conspired together to try to kill Leonard. That's what the, that's what they're saying. And so Voyo calls him and he's like, you know, your mom is all squared away. You got your first wire transfer. Be on the lookout for the next one. Like I held up my end of the bargain. You held up yours. And Jacob was like, yeah, except for the fact that now I'm going to be forever on the run because now I'm being accused of attempted murder. 
And Boyle was like, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Have a good life. <laughs> Boyle is cold, honey. So he goes to visit Nandi and she is just disgusted. And so Nandi is like, look, all of this is your Uncle V. Like, he is setting me up. He admitted to everything. Like, you have to believe me. And Z is like, you've been lying to me this whole time. And now you want me to believe you? Like, I can't believe you anymore. I don't know what to believe anymore, but I don't want to see you anymore. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Like, I just, I can't take none of this no more. And I was appalled. Now, mind you, yes, Z is right. Nandi has been doing a lot of lying. I do understand that. But the bulk of the stuff that's been going on had to do with her daddy, <laughs> not Nandi. And then Z saw what happened when she tried to admit the truth and it was rejected. She saw her mama try to take the blame for what she did. So for you to act like your mama just lying, 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 girl, so that was another issue I had with this, ep this episode. I was like, something don't add up. Like, you know you accidentally killed your father. Your mom took the blame for it. If your mom was a terrible person, why would she take the blame for something that she didn't do? Like, then you know this narrative that she tried to kill your father isn't true because you the one that almost killed him. Z leaves the jail. Nandi is distraught. Like... Basically, it looks like Boyle's plan was a success because Leonard is in a coma. Jacob is out of the picture, and now he's the person of interest in Leonard's attempted murder along with Nandi. Um, you know, he got access to all of Leonard's money, and he got his daughter. And, vin and vindication for Brenda. So everything seems to be all well and good. So we get a shot of Z on a, in a jacuzzi or something on a rooftop. Boyo is sipping on champagne, living his life like it's golden, honey. And then he gets a phone call. And it is precious, honey. And she is like, um, so we have heard that you're still trying to uncover things in this Jiba case. And so we need you to go ahead and let your little police friends know that this case is dead. You know, basically the same thing they told um, Leonard and they're like so you need to go ahead and make this case go away and if you don't you're gonna lose everything that you love which at this point is just Z because who else is he loving right and so he tells Z to go in the house and he's like freaking out and we get a final scene which the final scene was so unnecessary it was the minister and he was like on this little BDSM contraption and Precious was like whipping him and I'm and that was it and I'm like I hated that ending. I feel like episode 13 was a great place to end. Um, episode 14 just, I mean, it wrapped up a lot of things, but of course, you know, it left a lot of cliffhangers for a possible season two. But y'all, that was season one, Fatal Seduction. And it was a good ass show. It just, it was really good. I've been telling people to watch it. Um, I ended up watching it because, you know, one of my friends was telling me, you know, to check it out because it was really good. Um, and I had been avoiding it because y'all know how Netflix, you know, sometimes you get some good stuff, sometimes you don't. But this was really, really good. So hopefully, you know, they get greenlit for a season two because this is a show that's based in South Africa. They're not, uh, to my knowledge, they're not dealing with the same type of like writer strike and all that stuff that's happening here in America. So um, hopefully that has no impact on them or whether or not they, they will greenlit a season two. Um, so if there's a season two, I will absolutely be reviewing it because I'm interested to see, you know, if Leonard stays in that coma, you know, if he doesn't stay in the coma and if he does come out of it, you know, then he can back up Nandi's story you know that Z was the one that stabbed him you know and and all these different things he'll still be in trouble you know for lying about Benjamin Zeba but then will Jacob stay away you know how will Z feel about Boyo just all the things like what else is the minister covering up you know what other crimes has he just kind of made up you know for his benefit you know just there's so many things and so many places that this show could go so hopefully there's a season two I am so looking forward to it so thank you guys for 
sticking around and, and watching Fatal Seduction with me and, and watching the show and, and comment and let me know your thoughts. Um, I really appreciate it. Y'all know I don't really do scripted TV shows or anything that often on my channel. Number one, they just take too damn long to review. <laughs> And my attention span is not that long, so I, I'll be over these shows. But um, thank y'all for sticking around. And let me know your thoughts on the show, on the finale. How did you feel about the ending? Did you feel like it was good? Do you also feel like episode 13 could have been where it stopped? Like, let me know your thoughts. And as always, y'all, like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel. And I'm going to see y'all next time for another episode of Thriller Things.